I think this deserves some intro music. I, James Harris, am pleased to announce that I have finished reading book one of the Wheel of Time series, The Eye of the World. BFD, I'm a screenwriter. Honestly, I loved it. I loved just being able to sit down and to be immersed in the world. It was just, it was a really enjoyable experience. My main goal with this video is not so much to give really my thoughts on the book itself, but sort of just to provide some insight into what somebody might want to keep in mind as they are starting the series. I know I'm only like 7% through the series, but I still think these are some valuable tips and there aren't gonna be any spoilers. My first tip is to just not rush the book. As I've mentioned in you know the other videos that I have made, excessive description is one of the biggest criticisms for The Wheel of Time. I really think that people who say this are just looking for different things in a book. While I love like a hard hitting, fast paced story just as much as the next person, I've kind of realized over the last year that I also really enjoy that attention to detail. And in hindsight, I kind of realized that I've always felt like this. For example, in Harry Potter, I've only read Harry Potter one time back when I was like 10, but I remember really, really enjoying the little things like when they would go to Diagon Alley to go shopping for their school supplies. You know, I mean, could they have left out, you know, these, these lists about what books they needed to get and what size of cauldron and whatever else there might be and still have had a great story? Yeah, probably, but I'm glad that they didn't. Those little details add depth to the picture that the author is painting. In Eye of the World, this kind of detail is very prevalent and I, I just loved it. About halfway through the book, the main group gets split up into three groups. One of those groups consists of two young men and these, these guys, they are on foot, they have little to no money, they are sleeping under bushes and maybe every once in a while they might get lucky and get to sleep at somebody's farm and they are barely getting any food. Their luck changes when they realize that they can be performers in these inns along the road to their destination. Once they realize this, they're being fed, they're sleeping in beds, and they're even making a little bit of money. Okay, so let's pause for a second. What I just described in like five sentences is spread across about like a hundred pages. That's totally just a wild guess, but you, you get the point. While there are other things that happen during this time, really most of it is just telling about their journey. It sounds boring, but I found myself wanting to jump into this book and travel with these guys. I wanted to walk down a dusty road from village to village and earn my bed and earn my food by performing for an inn just packed with people. Just the simplicity really appealed to me. I might be jumping to conclusions because I've only read the first book, but I really think that the reason why this series has the kind of critical acclaim that it has and holds the place that it does in the fantasy genre is because of these kinds of descriptions. So yeah, just don't rush it. Like just let yourself enjoy the book and let yourself be drawn in. If you rush it, you're gonna miss one of the best things about the book. Second, don't try and understand everything. I think that we all just want to understand everything around us. It's just human nature. I think if we weren't wired that way, we would still be living in caves. One of the things that was hard for me is that certain details were brought up over and over again, and the characters are confused or don't understand what's going on. And all of this confusion could have been resolved by just asking why. The example that comes to mind is the Heron Marked Sword. If you haven't read the book, one of the main characters is given a sword by his father pretty much at the beginning of the book. The sword has a heron on the hilt, the blade, and the scabbard. A heron is a bird. Here's a picture. Anyway, pretty much any time somebody sees this sword throughout the entire book, they are either scared, or they are impressed, or they shy away, or they make some kind of comment about it. It's like everybody knows that this sword is special and knows why it is special, except for the person who owns it. Rand, the owner, is just totally out of the loop. You would think that at some point he would just say, Oh, hey, magic lady and ninja warrior. Since we are just riding on these horses all day, could you tell me why everyone gets their small clothes in a tangle when they see this sword? But he never does. I think that the argument could be made that this is an area where 
it's not very realistic because what person wouldn't just ask that question? But people are just crazy. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! I mean, even in the best circumstances, people are crazy. Crazy. But add in the stress of life-threatening situations and all of your deep-seated beliefs being questioned, and all of that craziness is just multiplied. But I just think that this is going to be the way it is. It's Jordan's whole read and find out thing. And as I have thought about it, it's one of the things that kept me reading. But it all worked out because at the beginning of book two, I finally found out the whole deal about the sword. Back in December, Amazon released a picture of Rand's sword, of the Heron Marked Blade. And honestly, it doesn't look like anything like what I imagined. I think I always imagined it as more like not a katana. So I went back and I looked at where the sword is described. It definitely matches the description of a katana. My mind just didn't paint that picture. This realization has kind of changed the way that I see the world that the series takes place. I think I just envisioned medieval fantasy. It is not medieval fantasy. Whoops. Finally, maybe don't do what I did. I lucked out and found the entire series for a steal of a deal. Like, I am super stoked to have this. I think it's beautiful. And I even tried my hand at wood carving to make a bookendy thing to separate it from the other books. However, while this is cool and fun and whatnot, it still is just kind of a constant reminder of how long the series is and how little of it I have read. And it's kind of overwhelming. But I'm now committed to reading the entire thing. It's a good thing that I like the first book so much. But to each their own, if you want to go out and do this, then just go crazy. Just be prepared to make about 20 inches of space on your shelf. And that is all of my advice. I am really sorry if this is not the kind of review that you were looking for. I don't really feel like it's a good use of my time or yours to just do a play-by-play. -play. Or maybe it is. I don't know. You tell me. Either way, thank you for tuning in. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, please go and donate whole blood or platelets to the American Red Cross. I've included the link in the description. So have a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, and happy reading.